Good morning and uh, welcome here to, to uh, I'm not sure what it is today to be perfectly honest, it's neither sunny nor murky, it's just autumnal. Um, I hope this finds you well, I hope you're in good spirits and a good voice this morning. Um, it is Thursday today, so uh, almost you could say we're back to normal. Managed to get the computer working today. The laptop working so it's not quite such a close-up um, that, that you're, you're going to get as as was yesterday when I was on my tablet. Um, do exactly the same things today as I was doing yesterday and it works. But uh, it probably, it was probably down to the, uh, uh, this, the haste that I was doing things. Today uh, we will be using our blessings, our Thursday blessings that we that we do on a Thursday. Today, obviously, is the day for speaking the obvious. Hopefully, you have uh, the liturgy in front of you, and um, we will start at the beginning, where it's the best place to start. So let's have a moment where we recognise that we are in almighty God's presence. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Or let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the, all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Going to use Psalm 113 today, Psalm 113. Again, if that is not what was on the notice sheet, uh, I really, really do apologise. Starts with this refrain from the rising of the sun to its setting let the name of the Lord be praised Alleluia give praise you servants of the Lord O praise the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore from the rising of the sun to its setting let the name of the Lord be praised the Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God that has his throne so high, yet humbles himself to, be, to behold the things of heaven and earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ashes to set them with princes, with the, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren women a place in the house and makes her joy, a joyful mother of children. Alleluia. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O Lord. May your promise to raise the poor from dust and turn the fortunes of the needy upside down be fulfilled in our time also, as it was in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Uh, 
Um, I'm afraid I didn't see the beautiful rainbows, just uh, the rainbow just over our head. Um, um, I, I, I love rainbows. Uh, I missed that one, I'm afraid, Christine. Um, where, where I'm, yes, I didn't see it. They are something to behold there. Something that just brings a joy. If you would like to read uh, the um, reading from the Old Testament, today's 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 19. 2 Kings uh, 19, 1 to 19. read a bit about Hezekiah. You can say that name. Some of the others can't. But we're going to use the Song of the Covenant. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I've given you as a light to the nations, and I've called you in righteousness. We're now going to uh, look at Paul's letter to the Philippians almost said Colossians, but that's on Sunday. Uh, but to the Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, we're going to read to the end. So Philippians chapter 2. And I just noticed down there, uh, the reason I, I, I grinned slightly was that there's quite a long Greek name there. Um, which I've just kind of read in my head what it comes out like in about... <clears throat> I mean, it's time. Who knows? But Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word, the word of life that I can boast on the day of, of Christ that I did not run in vain or labour in vain or labour in vain. But even even if I am being poured out as a libation above the, above, excuse me, let me start that sentence again. But even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and the offering of you, of your faith. I am glad and rejoice with all of you, and in the same way you also must be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I may be cheered by news of you. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. All of them are seeking their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ, but Timothy's worth you know. How like a son with a father he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go for with me. And I trust in the Lord that I will also come soon. Still, I think it necessary to send you Epaphroditus. Practiced it. Epaphroditus, my brother and co-worker and fellow, fellow soldier your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for all of you and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill that he nearly died. But God had mercy on him 
and not only on him, but on me also, so that I would not have one sorrow after another. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. Welcome him, then, in the Lord with all joy and honour, and honour such people, because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking life to make up for those services that you could not give me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Excuse me. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. It's quite a calling, really. And if you look at the history of the church, you wonder whether we've been very good at that. Doing all things without murmuring and arguing. Doesn't mean to say we can't disagree. And that doesn't mean to say we can't debate things. Can't mean to say we don't discuss things. Uh, I think Paul was one for discussion, for disagreement, for holding people to account. Maybe being held to account. We don't read a huge amount of that, but maybe being held to account. Um, Paul was not one who argue might be pushing it but he did discuss the word of god there are things that we need to chew over there are things that we need to discuss there are things that we need to debate issues of the time i guess what paul is getting at though is that we do need to stand out and be like shine like stars in the world not arguing for arguing argument's sake. If we're going to argue, if we're going to discuss, we do it with love. We do it with respect. What will be interesting tonight, um, or overnight, as the two presidential candidates debate again, whether they would would be seen without blemish, either of them, and whether they're going to shine like stars, are they going to seem like presidents, are they going to treat each other with respect, who knows. One thing is for sure though that they will get a lot of coverage and the headlines tomorrow will undoubtedly be about that. Uh, or there will be amongst the headlines, and perhaps even judgment. We might all look at it and judge. But we need to, we cannot judge. It's not our place to judge if in the privacy of our own homes or in the privacies of wherever we may be, perhaps even with our Christian brothers and sisters, we are the same. The only difference would be that we will not be watched by millions of people across the nations. But God sees all. So let's be different. Let's shine like stars in the world, in a world which needs stars. Let us be like rainbows, things of beauty, things that even in amongst disagreement, peace can be found, respect can be found. Let us uh, strive to be without blemish in the midst of the world today. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. 
I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Come to the Benedictus. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. We're now going to come to our blessings. And, uh, ooh, it's just away. We've been praying these for the last um, number of years, over, well over three years, three and a half years now, um, since before my arrival, every Thursday. And uh, not even a pandemic can get in the way, thankfully. So in a moment of quiet, you might like to lift before God uh, those whom you particularly wish to feel God's blessings this day. I firmly believe that as we pray these across our parishes and communities, as we pray these across our town, I firmly believe that it makes a difference. I firmly believe that we need to pray for our communities and that God responds. Also believe that God responds anyway and knows the needs of people. But it helps draw our mind to seek God's blessing, but also to be God's blessings to the world around us as well. So as we pray for these things, let us strive to bless these things ourselves and be God's blessings. Speaking out blessings into our communities comes from the Bible, which tells us when we speak blessings over people, God responds. So claiming the promises of God's word, we pray in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we take upon ourselves the authority Jesus delegated to us, and in his name we speak to every household within our parishes, across our communities, across our town and nation. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We bless your marriages that they may be strong and whole. We bless your relationships that they may be strong and whole. 
and we bless the relationship between each partner that it may be living, loving, forgiving, merciful, life-giving and strong. We bless every intergenerational relationship within each household that there may be peace and love and understanding flowing between each one. In Jesus' name, we bless every network of wholesome and supportive friendship. We bless your health, that you may be strong and well. In Jesus' name, we resist any sickness or disease which seeks to invade these communities. And to every person we say, be well, be strong, be healthy. To any who are sick right now, we say we bless you in Jesus' name for speedy recovery. We especially pray for Robert and Georgina, for Ruth, Christine, Sandra, Eddie, Cliff, Dennis, Dawn, Robbie, Phoebe, Vicky, Addy, William, Stephanie, Beverly, Roy, Rachel, and Julia. We pray for all those on our hearts this day who are struggling in body, mind or spirit. We bless those who are in the autumn of their lives. For all of those who live and work in residential care, that they may know the peace and presence of God in their hearts. And in Jesus' name, we pray that they will have assurance and hope for the future. We speak blessings of patience, wisdom and love to all carers and associated staff. We bless the wealth of every person in our communities that they may have plenty to replace poverty. We bless you to have enough to live and enough to give. We bless the work of your hands that whatever you turn your hand to which is wholesome may be profitable. We bless every wholesome enterprise that's conducted by you that it may prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, we bless the businesses operating within our bounds that they will flourish and employee-employer relationships will be wholesome, fair and full of integrity. We bless our local preschools and schools that they may be secure and safe for teachers and pupils alike. We bring before you this day students and pupils, young adults, some older adults, children, we little tots who are in our schools, preschools, nurseries, colleges and universities. We lift before you Joel and Talitha, Grace and Emily, Lily and Jacob, Hannah and Jake, Oscar and Anton and Kerry, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie and Travis, for Nathan, Ruby and Noah, and for Evie. We bless their capacity to learn and develop relationships. We bless the governors and all staff that they will know that they can trust and flourish if they put their faith in the Lord Jesus. 
and we pray especially this day for Sarah and Matthew, for Asher and Rebecca, for Chris and Joshua, for Sue and Susan and Nick. We pray your blessing on all contact the church has with schools and colleges and universities in Jesus' name. We bless the local doctors, nurses, district nurses, carers, healthcare workers, pharmacists and all the staff of Sunderbrook Court as they minister to people that they may have wisdom, guidance, gentleness and understanding for their patients. We pray for their protection this day, dear Father. We pray, dear Father, that they will feel your presence in a time of anxiety, of not knowing quite what's around the corner. And for those that need to go to the doctors or to, to, the, to, to the hospital for, for appointments and for um, treatments and surgeries, we pray for them this day, dear Father, and we pray especially for Leslie, for her uh, an appointment, her appointment this morning. Pray, dear Father, that it will will um, continue to help on that road to recovery. Pray, Lord, that it will go without complication, and that she will feel your healing touch. And we thank you for those that will be looking after her this morning, for their knowledge, their care, compassion, and understanding. We pray for all the emergency services as they operate within our bounds, that they will be blessed with safety, protection and wisdom. And we bless those working in the police, the fire and the ambulance uh, stations and services in our parish and across our nation. We pray for government. We pray for our local parish councils, our local borough council, and our national government. And at this time of division, at this time of uncertainty, at this time of fear and conflict. We pray that they will receive your blessings and that they may be guided as they seek the best for our nation and communities and look towards the future with wisdom and hope. And we speak to all Christians in our communities and we say we bless you in the name of the Lord that the Holy Spirit and the word of God will flow out from you in power. We bless the hearts of all who live here that you may be quickened to hear and respond to the voice of the living God. We bless all who live and work here that the overspill of blessings and the presence of the kingdom of God may fall upon you. And our, excuse me, I've got flick between things. I've got a mouse by my side as well. And sometimes I move the mouse in order to try to move the screen on my tablet, which doesn't kind of work. Our collect for today. Oh God, for as much as without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us draw our prayers together. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, it is a great privilege to be able to do this, uh, and a great uh, pleasure as well. Uh, I hope you have um, a great day today, and I, I hope uh, I can see some blue sky out there. It's really, really good, and, and uh, I hope that that rainbow that that Christine spotted early earlier, sorry, I hope that's. Uh, uh, tells us of the great day that we're going to have today. It will be a good day today. Uh, I look forward to being together again very soon. Um, morning prayer tomorrow at nine o'clock. And of course, we do have our services on Sunday as well. Half past nine at Stratton. Half past nine at Stanton for the service and APCM. And then 11 o'clock at South Mars. But using this uh, prayer from the liturgy that we occasionally use on a Saturday. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless. See you soon.